26 of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let us make man in our own image. In the image of God created in him, male and female created in them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look up for a second. I'm trying to talk about the proofs of God's love for you and I. I'm talking about love. I started by saying God is love. So now I'm sharing with you the proofs of God's love. And one of the proofs is this. God took out time. Amen. God took out time to prepare the way for us to come into this world. Hallelujah. You know how you have, when you have a pregnant woman, you know, the pregnant woman prepares where the child, will, you know, where they will go for the delivery of the baby. The pregnant woman knows what hospital. Amen. The pregnant woman is already buying clothes for the baby. Amen. God had the same mind and even greater than we think. Amen. God knew what we will want. He created the heaven and the earth. He divided the waters. He created dry ground. He said to the waters, do not pass beyond a certain point. He created a light. Let it be light. He created the food that we need. Amen. He created everything. Everything. He created the sea. He created the, the, the fishes in the sea, the birds of the air, and everything. And then he created man in his own image. God's love. Proof number one. And then, if you look at that verse 26, God said, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. How much God loves us. Some people, amen, if you look at the uh, structure of the organizations in, uh, in our societies, you'll find out that people that are privileged to be on top, they don't want other people to rise up <laughs> to where they are. Amen. They want to have dominion over every other person. Praise the Lord. But here's our God. He had in mind to create man. He didn't create man in the image of a monkey. God didn't create man in the image of a giraffe. Amen. Even though those are also beautiful creatures of him. God didn't make man in the image of a statue. God made man in his own image. That's his law. Amen. God made man in his own image, after his own likeness. God's law for you and I. Amen. We are created in his own image, not the image of a monkey. Hallelujah. And see what he said. He said in verse 26, And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let them have dominion. He has everything, he owns everything, and yet he delegated it to us. He said, be in charge, son, be in charge, daughter. Let them have dominion. It pleases God that we have dominion. As we take charge, God is excited because we are following his work. We believe him. We are taking charge. We are not living a fearful life. You're not living in fear. You're not living in doubt. Amen. We don't feel like everything is over with us. Amen. We still believe God. We believe God. Because from the, from the origin, God wants us to take charge. Amen. He wants us to take charge. He doesn't want us to be intimidated by the circumstance which we see around. Amen. Those are temporary. Amen. God's plans and purposes for our lives are permanent. Amen. And he wants us to take charge. I want you to say to your neighbor, say, I'm taking charge in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Another proof of God's love is evident by his death. The death of his son on the cross. Amen. Yes. He said, I have dominion. He said, uh, you know, replenish the earth, multiply. And you and I would know what happened. Man failed God. We fail God. Amen. We fail God. And still, while we were yet sinners, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, while we were yet sinners, He came and died for us. He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, to come and die for us. What did God deserve? 
God's love. Amen. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Jesus Christ. And then, you know, one thing that I love about it is, is that is that his death on the cross is not just for a particular group of people. Amen. It's not just for, for, you know, for the black people. It's not just for the white people. Amen. It's, it's not just for the United States. It's not just for the people in Africa. It's for the whole world. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells me in John chapter 3 verse 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God's love is not discriminatory. Amen. God's love is not racist. Praise the Lord. God's love does not condemn other nations and love other nations. God's love extends to all mankind as many that will receive him to them he gave the power to become sons of God. Amen. God loves the world so much, whosoever believes in him should not perish. Whosoever, it doesn't matter what background they have, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The love of God. Amen. The book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 to 29 says, There's neither Greek nor Jew. Amen. There's neither Greek nor Jew, slaves or freedmen. Amen. We are one body in Christ Jesus. As many that receive him, they come to that body. One body. Amen. One body. Sinking sand. All of that love is sinking sand. Amen. If you don't have the agape love, which is God's love, amen, don't get married. Praise the living Jesus. You must have the agape love. God's love. The agape love that loves, irrespective of the circumstance around. Amen. God's love is everlasting. Amen. A marriage that's going to last. Amen. Both the wife, the husband, they must have the agape love. It is the agape love that lasts forever. Amen. It is the agape love that helps to sustain relationships. It is a agape love that helps to sustain a marital home. Amen. So many times. Amen. There have been times I have stepped on my wife's toes. <laughs> I have stepped on her toes. But because she has the agape love. Amen. She's still in love with me. Yeah. Amen. So many times she has stepped on my toes too. Amen. Because of the agape love, I'm still in love with her. <laughs> Amen. The agape love helps you to, 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 to know that it's not about you. Amen. The agape love helps you to know it's not just about her being your wife. In my own case, it's not about her being my wife. Amen. It's about the love of God. I cannot treat her the way God will not treat her. God, God will frown at me. Amen. And you know, when we're having a conversation, we, we always imagine God sitting on the other chair. Mm -hmm. Amen. In our conversation. Amen. We just imagine God sitting on the other chair so that we don't take advantage of each other. Amen. Amen. She knows what button to press to hurt me. Mm -hmm. I know what button to push to hurt her. Mm -hmm. We don't do that because we know God will frown at that. Mm -hmm. Praise the living Jesus. I can't be loved. I can't be loved. Strange things are happening now. People want to get married. They are signing the prenups. I don't know if we know the prenups. You know, the, the man will sign something so that when there's divorce, the woman does not take the money. Amen. That's not love. When you love someone, when you have the agape love, you don't begin to protect your finances. What is that for? Amen. What is that for? That tells you it's not true love. True love, you don't stand free now. So you have true love. Amen. All of those people, they call themselves, you know, celebrities. They do that often. You are celebrities in God's kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's let them know the right way to love is to love unconditionally. Amen. When, you, when people sign up, they are already anticipating divorce. Uh -huh. It will happen. It's a seed that has been sown. And every seed that you sow will germinate. As long as this earth remains, seed time and other time shall not cease. If you're in love with someone and God has said this is the man for you or God has said this is the woman for you, why sign paper that if divorce happens, 
This is what, this is my share, this is your share. That is not of God. Hallelujah. You should settle for God's love because it gives you a lasting marriage. Hallelujah. God's love will give you a lasting marriage. Funny enough, my wife and I, when there's a little uh, disagreement, within the next minute, we are smiling together. We have even forgotten we have the disagreement. Amen. Because the default of, of our mind is God. By default. By default. It's just God. So even when, when it seems like we are going a little to the side, we find ourselves back on track. Because we've been used to loving God. I can't pick kind of love. Amen. I can't pick kind of love. It helps you to have a lasting marriage. Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. I'm just going to read that quickly. Amen. Matthew chapter 19, 19 verse 6. And I read, Wherefore they are no more twin, meaning they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. The reason why you must settle for God's law. Amen. When God is involved, no man can put asunder. Can put asunder. Amen. No man can put asunder. But when you when when you get when you fall in love with someone on the basis of another type of definition of love, then when problem comes, people run away. Amen. Amen. People run away. So love is not just deep affection for someone. Amen. You don't go by that definition of love. Love is not just deep affection for someone. Love is love for God. Amen. Go and check out the divorce, you know, you know, you know statistics. The divorce statistics. You'll find out that people that have been engaged in divorce, they used to have deep affection mm -hmm. for each other. The deep affection filled them. Hallelujah. Love is not just about deep affection, and love is not love at first sight. Amen. Those are crafty definitions of love that is orchestrated by the devil himself. Don't buy it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should settle for God's love because it helps you to forgive the unlovables. Yes. You should settle for God because it helps you to forgive the unlovables. It helps you to love the unlovables. When you have the agape love, you're able to love those who don't deserve it too. You don't deserve God's love, but God gave it to you anyway. I don't deserve it. God gave it to me. So why would I hold someone else back? Hey man, I'm gonna love them too. Because God has shown me examples of love. Hallelujah. While that I was a sinner, he died for me. Amen. When I understand that love. While people are here to forgive, you know, to change, I'm also going to forgive them. Amen? Amen. I'm going to love them. Some people are in love from afar. Some people are in love cause. Amen? But I don't have any grudge against anyone. Because I, I understand love. I understand God. I understand the love of God. Amen? Amen. When, when a couple, when the husband and the wife, when they understand a gap in love, Amen. Amen. Forgiveness becomes easy. Because there's no way the tongue and the mouth, they fight with each other sometimes. They still live with each other. Yeah. I've bitten my tongue before. <laughs> I don't know about you. Maybe you have a perfect uh, mouth <laughs> and you've never bitten your tongue. Amen. But not often. It's a long time, very long time ago. And I don't pray that happens again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, but when you have a gap in love, it helps you to forgive easily. The same I got the love I'm extending to my children now. Build your capacity to love him. Amen. With all your heart, soul, strength, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's very crucial. A lot of folks have received Jesus, but they're not building their capacity to love him. Amen. Salvation is free for everybody. Anyone can say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. 
for my sins come into my life. It's free for everybody. But to grow, growth is available for all, only for those who desire to grow. Amen. Growth is available for all. Remember, salvation is free for everybody, free for all. Growth is also available for all, but we have to desire to grow. Amen. You must desire to grow. And your desire to grow is going to propel you to go to church, to go to Bible study, especially when you find a good church. Amen. This is a great church. You know, you go for Bible study, you know they teach the word, and you make yourself available. Learn the word and grow. You build your capacity. Amen. You build your capacity to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself. These things will not happen. Amen. If you only give your life to Jesus, amen, and you don't build that capacity to love. Hallelujah. You must build that capacity to love. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's how faith comes. And the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that, 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 that we should not be conformed to this world. Amen. We should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. You must build your capacity to love God. Amen. And as you love God, you know God. Amen. As you know God, you know love. Amen. 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 You know true love. Yes. And when you have that true love in its fullness, mm -hmm. you're able to share the love with your spouse. Amen. You're able to share the love with your neighbor. Amen. You're able to share the love with your children. Amen. You're able to share the love with everybody around you. That is true love. That is the foundation for any relationship. The agape love, the love of God. Foundation for any relationship. You want to have a great marriage? Have the agape love. Amen. Before you say, yes, I do. Amen. A lot of people stand, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Will, will, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> and then they jump up. It's not about that. It goes deeper than that. Amen. It goes deeper than that. A lot of people have said yes, and then five years later they are saying no. Mm -hmm. You can't change their minds. Because they lacked the agape love. They didn't have the agape love. You must have the agape love because the agape love is the center point for every other thing in life. Amen. If it could be your boss at work, you may be an employer, it could be your employees at work. When you have the agape love, it makes life easy for you. Amen. You can forgive people easily. Some people hold grudge so hard that they get frustrated by it. Amen. But when you have that capital law, amen. Even when people are misbehaving, you easily move on. Because you have the love in you. You easily forgive and move on. But when the capital law is not there, you are holding grudges. And that grudges can even cause depression. Amen. That grudges can lead to so many other things. Loneliness, thought of suicide. Amen. People don't have uh, God's love. So some evil students in high school committed suicide because someone said the wrong thing about them. Amen. Someone uh, bullied them, praise the Lord, and then they go commit suicide. Amen. When they have God's love, they say it like Jesus said it, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Suicide will not be the first thing they think about. God's love. It must start with God's love. And can I even surprise you more? You have to remember that Moses was given the Ten Commandments. Amen. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt worship to all the God, but, but, himself, but God himself. Amen. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image. Amen. Thou shalt not covet and the rest of them. First of all, everything, the Ten Commandments, is summed up in love. It's summed up in love. Praise God. It's summed up in love. When you have God's love, when you have the agape love, amen, when you have the agape love, you shall have no other gods before God. When you have the agape love, you have the Ten Commandments already in your hearts. When you have the agape love, you shall have no other God before God. That's going to happen. When you have the agape love, you shall not make unto thee any graven image. 
Because you have the agape love, when you have love the Lord with all your strength, with all your might, with all your mind, with all your soul. Amen. You will not violate that. It's because it's already in your heart. Look at the third commandment. It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. When you have the agape love, you won't take the name of the Lord in vain. When you love the Lord your God, according to Luke chapter 10, 27, when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind, you will not do that. You will not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. We have the agape love. Look at commandment 4. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. When you have the agape love, you know, you, you just live by faith. Honor your father and your mother. When you have the agape love, it flows easily. It starts from love. Thou shalt not kill. When you have the agape love, you won't kill. You will forgive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. When you have the agape love, you won't do that. Amen. Amen. Thou shalt not steal. When you have the agape love, you will not steal. Amen. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. When you have that gap of love, you won't do that. Amen. Thou shalt not covet, covet. Thou shalt not covet that neighbor's property and Amen. things like that. When you have that gap of love, you won't do that. It must start with love. Amen. Come to your neighbor and say, I say it must start with love. It must start with love. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Love is kind, love is gentle, and all of these definitions of love. Those are great things, amen. But if you don't have God, amen, all of those things are fallacies. Amen. They are fallacies. Without God, it is impossible to love. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm just going to put it now, like, like Solomon put, you know, puts it. He said, this is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. When you have the fear of God in your heart, you will love God. You will receive Him. You will grow in, in, in Him. You desire to grow in Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Desire to grow in Him. And His love will continue to help you live your life. Amen. You will live your life free of, of worries, of burdens. Amen. You live a good life. Praise the living Jesus. My prayer for you is that the Lord will strengthen you more. The Lord will enable you more to grow in His Word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to want us to pray. And we're going to use Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 16 to 17 to pray.